They love that dance. Look at those moves. You've got three-time All-Pro Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles tackle with us today. Is there anyone tougher in the trenches? No! Lane Johnson, how are you? Welcome back. Doing good. Yeah, uh, just a few months away from training camp, so, so winding down. Yeah, you got some new moves you're working on, buddy, over the summer? <laughs> yeah, after my surgery, I had to learn a few uh, to get back in the rhythm again. But, yeah, I'm glad that's over. But, yeah, feeling good, and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to the season. Amazing. It's great to see you. You look great. I, You know, we're, we're going to get into it all, but summer travels are what I'm thinking about. I might go to Italy. I might hit up a couple of training camps. Do I need to add Frisco to the list? Because, my goodness, Lane, the OL Mastermind Summit is coming up July 7th and 8th. And this teaser that was tweeted with this lineup, tell me all about it. Yeah, so we, we have uh, Will Shields coming this year, um, mm. Steve Hutchinson, um, Whitworth, uh, Anthony Munoz. So we're really just getting a whole broad selection of guys. But I think the main thing is to get all these different caliber of players. They can talk about their experience, you know, in NFL, how they trained, what they did. And I just think it gives, like, incredible insight, especially to a lot of the young guys that are in so they can learn and, and hopefully develop their game a little bit. Those young guys. You're 33. You're like an yeah. OG in this league, even though it doesn't look like it. Does it feel crazy to be like, I'm 33, but I, I mean, you're, you're at your peak. You're looking insane out there every game. Yeah, it, like in my mind, I'm still like 25. And then, you know, as the years go on, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm the old guy now. So it's it's crazy kind of how the, uh, the circle has, has came back to me. Do you and Jason joke about that? Do you embrace it? Yeah, I, I definitely embrace it. It seems like, you know, the older that we, we've gotten, the uh, the shorter the fuse it takes to kind of set us off. It's kind of like, you know, the, the dog you once had that was once young and youthful, and as they get older, they might get a little <laughs> bit more tested. <laughs> I like that comparison. That's a good metaphor. Uh, I want to do like a little check-in because you, you won the Super Bowl. You know what that feels like. And you lost the Super Bowl, so you know what that feels like. So you're a, a, sort of a, a rare person who gets the, the feeling of both. Uh, which one did you learn more from, the win or the loss? I um, mean, you learn a lot in both. I think the win, I just think you realize that the next year is very tough. The schedule is usually uh, a little bit tougher. And then you have people, you know, coming for you. They know, they know that they're playing against a good team. So mentally, that was a tough year. And then, you know, obviously the loss, I think you can learn a, a lot about. Um, you know, we we're, were very close to getting a second one. But uh, just I think you learned how much work it takes and how special I think the moment is, um, you know, after the fact, you kind of realize it. But, yeah, it's just it's a long process. You know, you start in late July, and then you're not done until February. So it's just a, such a long season. It takes a lot of, you know, ability. It obviously takes a little bit of luck, you know, keeping healthy and, and all that. But really, uh, yeah, you, you grow, uh, you know, you learn to respect it, just the whole process and, and everybody involved. Lane, knowing how a loss feels now, do you feel like you celebrated back in 2018 enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I maybe could have taken a notch further. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you just, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm two totally, totally different people from, from them. But, yeah, I just, you know, I, I think I've grown to learn. I just appreciate the guys that I'm with. Uh, I remember Brent Selleck talking about how he was uh, playing in the NFC Championship, I think, his rookie year. And then he's like, you know, I'll be back. They lost, uh, lead to the Cardinals. And then, you know, he didn't go back till his 11th, 11th season, his last season. So, yeah, I'm just uh, taking advantage of all my new teammates, uh, learning those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and just really setting, uh, getting ready for the season. I feel like we have a lot of ability, and uh, also we have a tough schedule. So, um, you know, it'll it'll all come by and by. But, yeah, just really excited about the guys that we acquired. I think we have the, the ability to be a, a great team this year. We love to hear that. I want to hear about those rookies, of course. You've had this front row seat to watching Jalen Hurts. He was in the headlines in the offseason, of course. The loss is behind you. There's probably no better person to lead that team and the mentality he has in looking forward and turning the page than Jalen Hurts. And you got to watch him crush it with your Sooners probably before even ending up in Philadelphia. You've seen his mm -hmm. growth. Lane, what's the biggest thing that sort of maybe stuck out to you once you became teammates from watching him back when he was in college? And and what have you noticed about his growth the most over the past couple of years? I mean, obviously he's grown as a player. I just think his, uh, you know, the quarterback position, his temperament and demeanor, how he goes about his business uh, every day, um, how he conducts himself in the meeting room, 
and just that confidence that's infectious. Um, you know, he, he says a lot without without saying a whole lot, if, if you know what I mean. So I think that's infectious to mm-hmm. the team. And really, I, like I said, it's like a coach that's very calm, how he is in the huddle. That really helps the football team um, adjust to different situations, good or bad. And I think, you know, have, you know gives us the ability to – to ride the different challenges that each game presents. But I think that's probably the biggest thing is just his confidence and how he carries himself. I love to hear that. We can't wait to get you guys back in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, you signed that deal. You're ready to go. And you, you mentioned how it takes some luck. It takes good fortune. It takes health and all of that. And there's the physical part of that. And then there's the mental aspect of that. And even in talking about your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, you're talking about his demeanor. You're talking about, you know, how he handles things as a leader. And you're such an advocate. You're a leader in this space. You really are. It's Mental Health Awareness Month all of May. You don't do stuff in May. You do stuff all year Round and you're such a strong advocate. You're the first uh, athlete ambassador for Kuth, okay? And Kuth is a leading mental health digital platform and it's aimed towards kids. You're partnering with Kuth and the Philadelphia School District. This is about the coolest thing I've seen all off season. What made you wanna get involved in this? I, I just think over the past few years that athletes in general have promoted mental health. And I feel like, you know, in our profession, that a lot of the struggles we go through are, you know, with ourselves. And I think just developing yourself to be the best person you can be, not only with Phil, but I just think it helps with every aspect of life, relationships, um, you know, business. And I think, you know, develop that at a young age, at least bringing the knowledge to kids to uh, to work on themselves and develop themselves in that sense can make all the difference. And I, I think it's maybe a, a platform that maybe I wish I would have had when I was younger and could have taken advantage of. But, yeah, I just see that it's going to affect a, a lot of young men and women and, and help develop them to be the best person that they can be. And so I think just the mental health in general, uh, I think you saw like Kevin Love, uh, different guys like Tyson Fury yeah. promote it. But I think now that, you know, even Joe Burrow, Solomon Thomas, guys are jumping in, in the NFL and they don't realize how much impact that they have, you know, over their communities. It's amazing. It's geared towards school-aged children. It's Kuth. Guys, download it. If you're in the Philadelphia area, definitely use the resources that are available to you. And you bring it back to sports and the tremendous pressure that athletes are under. You've been so candid about it. What have you noticed even in the Eagles locker room as far as what the team is making available to you guys for resources and how to deal with and cope with the lights that you guys are under? Yes, I feel like uh, just the NFL has provided more – you know, resources for us, whether it be sports psychologists to talk to um, and really, you know, better yourself as a football player. And then you have resources where you can talk about stuff off the field and really learn how to manage any problems that you have effectively. I feel like a lot of times uh, a lot of people maybe procrastinate their problems and uh, put it aside, but it's really a way to address mm. your problems uh, and maybe overcome yourself, maybe get out of your own way a little bit and, uh, and, you know, in that sense. And yeah, I just feel like that's really, it's helped a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, become a better football player. And then that kind of goes into uh, becoming a better person It helps, you know, everything off the field. So it kind of goes hand in hand. It's really beautifully said. And, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about it. I see you talk about it. I had never gone to therapy. I went to therapy for the first time yesterday. I had a zoom call. Yeah. I did it for an hour. It was my first time. It was easy and um, it were easy like easy to do it wasn't hard to find someone or you know to get connected and it's something that I'm really looking forward to when it comes to reducing anxiety when it comes to becoming a more optimal self-actualized person so thank you for inspiring that because you really did you and all the players who are so open and candid about how important it is to sort of not put it aside and to focus on it so thank you Lane it's very cool uh, that you yeah, are cool. like this and that you're helping young kids yeah, it is cool. And like I said, it's uh, it's a weird experience at first, you know, maybe trying some of this stuff. But as you get into it more, you learn more about yourself maybe than you ever have. And you can start kind of unpeeling layers that you've that you've put up over the years and and really help become a better, like I said, a better version of yourself. It's amazing. It translates down to the field. We even asked some of our, you know, our community at Up and Adams, like all the sports fans, the NFL people, uh, you know, what is your best anxiety reducing technique? Because you shared some of yours on Twitter and you had some breathing exercises. But here's some of the answers that uh, our producer, Marissa, who you'll meet in a second, likes. First one is this one. Solitude and silence. Yeah, that's a good one for me. Just get, you know, Wayne, I know you love going fishing. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I like uh, maybe getting out of the digital realm and getting back into, uh, you know, nature. Like I said, quiet time. I feel like that's the 
maybe the thing that people need to live with the, the most is being able to be quiet, not having any type of stimulation or, or a phone and learn how to be just with yourself. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, during the whole process, you'll learn a, a lot about yourself uh, as you you know work through these new challenges and new programs. But uh, at the end of the day, it's so uh, refreshing and yeah, just, just a lot of positivity at the end of the day. And someone else said music and journaling, and then someone, I mean, people are just giving. I was really impressed. Everyone really gave what they do when they're feeling a little bit of anxiety or a little stress or they just want to focus on themselves. I thought that was really, really impressive. So we appreciate everything that you do, of course, with everything. But we want to get into, you know, somebody mentioned music. Music is a cool thing to do. So let's bring in somebody who's the biggest Eagles fan I know, and you have to meet her if you've never have. Her name is Marissa McBride. She's a producer on our show. She's a resident Philadelphia uh, correspondent. And she has she has a question for you, Marissa. Go for it. Oh no, we can't hear her. Yeah, hear we either. can't hear you. Hey, sorry. Hey, Lane. How are you? <laughs> Go ahead. Good morning. Uh, sh- good morning. Shout out to this first album. I had it on my bookshelf, but I saw something in- interesting on my Instagram feed. Is there is there another uh, album on the way? I saw an Instagram. I saw a little eye emoji that you commented. Can you confirm or deny another album? Oh, Ooh, uh, I can confirm we're working on music. We haven't, uh, you know, put a whole album together, but yeah, it's still, it's still in the works. So we just uh, actually got in the studio uh, last week. And so, yeah, this whole new music venture is totally new to me. Uh, obviously, Jordan's very talented. Uh, Kelsey and I enjoy music, obviously, but just getting uh, to work with people in the music industry and you see how things are designed and how everything's put together. It takes a lot of work and I just have a, you know, a lot of respect for these people. And uh, obviously it's going for a good cause. And just, yeah, the whole process is kind of like me getting out of my comfort zone. There's nothing comfortable about me going into a music studio and and not feeling like uh, fully equipped to uh, produce kind of the sound you want. But at the end of the day, it's it's very fun. And uh, the people that I work with, uh, it's a great time. And and yeah, uh, so I can't (laughs) confirm that that it is in the works. I think I have two more questions for you. Well, first of all, who's who's the worst singer? Sorry, Mar- sorry, Marissa. Who's the worst singer? Ooh, uh, it's down to, to Kels and I. Uh, Kels has like his niche. I have, I guess, my niche. Uh, but yeah, we both enjoy it. We're not very over the top talented, but we do enjoy being in there. And then we kind of got to uh, sit back and, and hear Jordan sing, who's obviously very talented. And so he kind of makes up for for some of the time lost on there with, with Kels and I. <laughs> I love that. All right. Thanks so much, Marissa. I have one question for you because we were talking about when we, you know, the last couple games we saw you last year. I know you want to look ahead, but we cannot let you get away without answering this question. This year's NFC Championship performance up against Mr. Nick Bosa, who won the awards, blah, blah, blah. Was that, in your opinion, because it's mine, your most dominant performance to date? Uh, it, it was a good, it was a good game for me. Besides, I think I got bull rushed a couple times, especially the first bull rush. He sent me back in the pocket. But yeah, I mean, anytime I'm going against a great player like that, they have my utmost attention, and it's just one of those things that when you play a great player, they're so smart. So you have to really dial in each and every play. And I feel like you know, uh, obviously the injury, and then him, I th- you know, obviously had my my attention. And yeah, it was just one of those games that everything kind of fell into place and. Um, I feel like some of the time that I did have to recover or my injury was, wasn't bothering as much as maybe it was in the Giants game. So I felt a little more comfortable out there. Yeah, I mean, you had a torn abdomen, zero sacks, zero quarterback case. That's going to be your Hall of Fame case someday. Lane, we appreciate you.